You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Monday, the 9th of July. Water authorities lift hose pipe ban in the last areas in the south today. Labour Party lifts the ban on Lord Ahmed, but do not say why. Church of England minister says rioters reach a state of ecstasy during looting. New Greek Conservative government in talks with Brussels today. Taliban film execution of woman accused of adultery in Afghanistan. Russian flood kills 170 people. Muslims in Nigeria kill 50 Christians. Thought for the day, child killers and the great cultural divide. UK news. After abnormally heavy rainfall in the UK, the final four water companies with hose pipe bans lifted them today with immediate effect. South East Water, Sutton and East Surrey Water, Veolia Water Central and Veolia Water South East said that the restrictions that have been in place since early April have now ended, as even more wet weather is predicted for July. Severe flood warnings were issued over the weekend, which saw more than a month's rainfall in 24 hours. Clean-up operations are still going on in the southwest and the Midlands. A World Date writer commented, Lifting the ban is fine, but it's too wet to go out in the garden anyway, let alone give it more water. The suspension of the Labour Party Muslim Lord Ahmed has been lifted. Lord Ahmed was suspended by the Labour Party for allegedly making comments in a Pakistani newspaper saying he would offer $10 for the President Obama's head. His remarks followed reports the US offered a $10 million bounty for the conviction of a Pakistani-based militant leader, Hafiz Saeed, the founder of the militant group Lashkar el taiba The chief whip named as Lord Bassam was thanked by Lord Ahmed for a fair investigation. Lord Ahmed said that the story printed in the Pakistan newspaper was lies. Labour confirmed the suspension had been lifted, but did not explain why. A World Date reporter comments, In case you are wondering who Lord Bassam is, he is apparently John Stephen Bassam, Baron Bassam of Brighton, born 11th of June 1953, is a British Labour and Cooperative politician and member of the House of Lords. A Church of England bishop today is reported as saying that taking part in a riot can be an ecstatic spiritual experience. The Right Reverend Peter Price said that the rioters of last summer found a spiritual escape as they looted and burned. It was reported in the Mail today. He went on to say that, in effect, it was a tragedy of our times that a large proportion of young people are desperate to escape the constrained lives to which they have been condemned and that they live in a consumer society. These riots saw five deaths, 3,000 arrests, and 1,000 were for burglary, violent disorder, and theft. A World Date writer comments, It is a fatuous remarks like this from our church people that are out of order. No one should make allowances for rioters. They were mainly ethnics of one sort or another. They were not starving, or any more hard done by than us Brits. They were simply doing what they do in the countries their families originated from, looting and making the most of an opportunity to get new trainers and game boys. Looters should be shot on sight. Euro news. The Eurozone debt crisis is being discussed in the Belgian capital of Brussels today. Antonis Samaris won a vote of confidence on Saturday with his newly formed Conservative government. Mr Samaris said that now he has confidence vote, he will now be able to argue a better case for the way Greece will escape from the financial crisis that has almost destroyed his country. A Greek reporter commented, with this new government of Conservatives, we have managed to keep out the far-left socialists. We do not want our country becoming a socialist state where everyone at the bottom eats gruel and one top fat cat gets to eat caviar. World News It was reported in the papers today that the Taliban have filmed the execution of a woman accused of adultery in Afghanistan. The online film shows a woman sitting on the ground and being riddled with bullets at close range with a crowd of cheering men shouting Allahu Akbar. It was apparently the third bullet that actually killed her. During the Taliban's reign in the 90s, public executions and amputations were common, but unfortunately now footage and accounts of similar punishments are coming from rural areas where the militants retain their authority and mete out Sharia justice. Police believe the video was shot last week in the province north of Kabul. A World Date writer commented, 
This is awful footage of film and shows the absolute domination of Islam. It is well known that anyone can be accused of adultery, when in fact they have been raped, or if indeed the husband is simply tired of his wife. It is justice completely blindfolded. If he wanted to do it quickly, a bullet to the head would have sufficed. The floods in Russia have claimed over 170 lives. President Vladimir Putin is said to have been paying his respects to the families of the dead and also expressing his sympathy for the thousands of people who have been made homeless with the bad weather. The UN's Kofi Annan has been in talks with the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad over the failed police plan. The Syrian President is standing firm over the assault on his presidency by outside intervention as well as from within Syria. Thousands of people have died on both sides of the conflict, which is not being properly reported by the left-wing media. The involvement by the Western world in the ousting of Arab countries' leaders should not be taking place, one nationalist reporter commented. Muslims in Nigeria have raided Christian villages, killing more than 50 Christians. The Nigerian government has failed to give the Christians the protection they need and have just abandoned them, one reporter said. A World Date reporter has commented, the attacks by these Muslims on defenseless Christians show that Islam and Christianity have no place together in the same land. We are seeing this all over the world in the great multi-faith, multicultural human bubble experiment. Thought for the day, child killers and the great cultural divide. Now I'm going to speak about four previous news reports. All involve the death of a child. One is perpetrated by a Muslim mother, two by white Christians, and the fourth is one of the many perpetrated in India. The death of a child is a dreadful crime and a waste of a life not yet lived. The sentencing, especially in the case of the white Christian mothers, seems harsh compared to the sentence a young Muslim woman received. Is justice blind or overly allowing for cultural differences over mental and physical ones? Or is it a question of ethnicity and religion? I put it to you. The first is the Muslim mother. She gave birth to a baby girl in secret, following an affair, and let her healthy newborn die before burying its body in the ground. Fatima Ali from Berry, Greater Manchester, feared she would bring shame upon her devout Muslim family for having the child out of wedlock. After giving birth to the infant alone in her bedroom, she cut the umbilical cord and left it to die. In April, in Bolton Crown Court, Ali burst into tears as she was given a 26-week prison sentence, suspended for two years, and subjected to a 12-month supervision order. Sentencing, Judge John Appleby said, you failed to seek medical assistance following the birth of your daughter. She died within two hours of her birth, and had you acted appropriately, her life could have been saved. The second is a Swansea mother, 34-year-old Michelle Smith from Morriston. She gave her baby Amy the drug dehydrocodine, a powerful painkiller only prescribed to adults. This had been prescribed for her and her husband. The court heard how paramedics were called to Mrs Smith's home in November 2007 after 42-day-old Amy had been found blue-lipped and lifeless. She was rushed to hospital, but later died. In court, her barrister, Sasha Vass, QC for Smith, told the jury she had been made a scapegoat. She also stated that no firm cause of death had been found, and experts and doctors had failed to give a definite answer. They could not rule out Amy had died of sudden infant death syndrome, or that the drug could have been given by medical staff. On the day of the baby's death, her mother was alone with her and her two other children. She has been sentenced to life and will be made to serve a minimum of 12 years. There follows Leanne Smith, 45, a former child protection worker who confessed to suffocating her daughter Rebecca, 5, and 11-month-old son Daniel with a plastic bag in Loret de Mar on the Costa Brava in May 2010. She apparently killed her children a few days after her partner, Martin Smith, was arrested in Barcelona for child sex offences. She claimed that killing her children was better than them being taken into care. Judge Aldolfo Garcia Morales had apparently allowed for Smith suffering a degree of mental disturbance when she committed the crimes and given her the minimum sentence of 30 years, 15 years for each child. He said that although she was mentally impaired, the murders were premeditated. The defence sought an acquittal because Smith was in a state of psychiatric disturbance and suffering insurmountable fear when the tragedy took place. So here we have four deaths, all probably unnecessary. We have various circumstances and cultural differences. No one will ever really know the reasons. The Muslim girl has escaped with the lightest sentence. She still killed her child, but her reasoning of offending her Muslim family obviously prevailed, and she will serve no prison time. But her baby is still dead. 
Next, Michelle Smith. She was a mother for the third time and was alone with all her children when Amy died. She strenuously denies giving any medication, and although some was found in the baby's bloodstream, her mother was breastfeeding her. We will never know. Whatever she did or did not do, she was obviously not in a good state of mind, and yet she has received a life sentence with a minimum of twelve years. Her baby is still dead, but no cultural difference is there to make an allowance for. The next one is the most tragic. Her children were old enough to know what was going on, and I believe she has the harshest sentence of all. It was handed out under Spanish justice, which is not the same, obviously, as our Muslim friend encountered. They believe, rightly or wrongly, in an eye for an eye. No mental state or cultural difference over there. Quite obviously, Leanne Smith was of unsound mind. Her partner had just been arrested for child sexual offences. She had two young children who would either be prey to their father or put into one of the many childcare homes to get lost either in the system or on the streets. What a terrible choice. She either could run with them or just give up, and that is what she did. She made an attempt on her own life soon after. Martin Smith, the father, received a sentence of 16 years for raping a minor and committed suicide in his cell in Manchester. Although her crime is terrible, she needs help, not the rest of her life in a Spanish jail. None of these women beat up or tortured their children or sold them or abused them. They killed them. I believe they were all suffering at the time, but justice has meted out very different sentences, haven't they? The next one makes me feel a little sick, I'm afraid. They occur in India, but amongst the Muslim population. Little Afreen was three months old. There were bite marks all over her body, but she died from being battered against a wall by her own father. What was her crime? She was born a girl. Yuma Farouk, her father, wanted a boy. She was not the first, and she will not be the last. Only last month, another Muslim girl, Falak, succumbed to similar physical abuse and injuries after fighting for her life for weeks at Delhi's trauma centre. Her tragic story started after her mother was sold by her Muslim family to a Hindu family as a sex slave, and Falak and her two siblings were left to fend for themselves on the streets. In the last ten years in India, eight million female fetuses have been aborted. We in the West will never understand the mindset behind these killings that are, that are taken as normal behaviour amongst the Arab and Asian communities, not only over here, but in their own countries. Why should we in Europe make allowances for other cultures to abort, kill and sell their own children, and indeed groom and sell our children? For years and years the medical and international community have been preaching to the ignorant that prevention is better than abortion. But it has fallen out of their cultural norm. They cannot see it. If the mainly Muslim communities in whichever country continue to abort their own female children, or sell the mothers and daughters off for sex slaves, they will eventually run out of breeding material. And this could be the reason why the Muslim Arabs started the sex slave trades from Europe and Eastern Europe during the Middle Ages, to fill the harems because their own breeding stock was so drastically reduced. My point is that another people's cultural identity, beliefs or religion should not be forced on the people of a host country. India and many other countries will suffer a whole lot more, as indeed we will in Europe, if steps are not taken to curtail the effect of Islam and its teachings and its so-called justice system in the future. It looks very bleak for our female babies and children in the New World Order. And finally, scientists have come up with the ingenious theory about how aliens actually look. Top scientists around the world have said that aliens will not be like little green men, but more like jellyfish, probably with orange bottoms. This theory comes when scientists explain that this is how life started even on our own planet as lots of new planets that are many light years from our own are covered in ice with possible seas and rivers running beneath them. So next time you see a UFO in the sky, be assured that if you see a blob of jelly coming towards you, be sure it's got an orange bottom. A World Date writer comments, Not sure how they got the orange bottoms, but never mind, I'd just run away. You have been listening to The World Date. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night.